So in the balloon, we've got a sample of xenon. Now xenon is one of the inert gases, but it's one of the inert gases that's right the way down the bottom of the period. So it's really, really dense. So what that means is that the gas molecules themselves are really, really large, really, really heavy. So in principle, they'll sink. So xenon is one of my favorite elements. It's a, it's a gas, but you can liquefy it really quite easily. So we've done an experiment here, and we filled this balloon with xenon. Now, xenon's very expensive. So there's about 40 pounds worth of xenon in this balloon right now, yeah? So we're going to do this experiment, and we're going to see if it sinks. And, and I think you'll agree that it does sink quite quickly. This is an old-fashioned xenon lamp. The xenon in its, in its bulb and you put a large voltage through here and the xenon gets very hot and shines out as a very bright light. Um, it looks black here because the electrodes get so hot that the metal has evaporated but xenon itself is colourless. But just to show you how dense it is, we've got a similar balloon but you'll notice that this balloon is much much higher filled so it's much much bigger. Now this is one that we've just blown up with air so... This is a more modern xenon lamp of the sort of lamp that is used in very powerful spotlights, for example, on tanks to illuminate, that's military tanks, to illuminate the target. And the uh, window here is made of aluminium oxide and all the light comes out as a really very powerful beam. So let's see if we can compare the rates at which these two balloons will sink so we can look at the comparative densities. Ready? Now that's a really clear demonstration to show how dense the xenon gas itself is. Xenon can also be used to make very powerful lasers and in the 1980s when Ronald Reagan, the then American president, started his so-called Star Wars program to try and destroy rockets in space, there was a plan to put xenon chloride lasers into space and the price of xen xenon zip literally rocketed so that scientists like me just couldn't afford to do research and we moved on to cheaper materials like carbon dioxide. Well, xenon exists in the air and when people liquefy air, they first of all separate the nitrogen and then the oxygen for and at the end, they're left with the noble gases, argon, krypton, and xenon. So it is made from the air. And one of the problems with this price rise of xenon was that at the same time as there was a bigger demand for xenon, there was a downturn in the steelmaking industry, which uses a lot of oxygen. So the chemical plants that were, or the refrigeration plants that were making xen uh, oxygen were switched off, so there was a smaller supply of xenon. Whoa! That'll be the air. <laughs> <laughs>